2020's The Last of Us Part II may be a game about surviving the aftermath of a global pandemic that was released during a global pandemic, but the game still garnered major critical acclaim for its heart-wrenching story and lush graphics, ultimately scoring over 300 Game of the Year awards. Like the original The Last of Us before it, it features a mournful ending that left players wondering just where it could go from here. Recently, though, a Naughty Dog writer revealed how things could have been a little different. Alright, come on. Is it? Yeah. The Last of Us is a frequently dark and serious franchise, set in a world ravaged by the effects of a mutant strain of cordyceps that has left isolated bands of survivors struggling to survive amid zombie-like infected. The first game focuses on Joel, a smuggler who has been tasked with transporting a young girl named Ellie across the wreckage of the United States. What am I supposed to do? I am sure you will figure that out. Ellie is mysteriously immune to the predatory infection and feels tremendously conflicted over her ability to survive where others die or are turned. The two of them bond as they spend months making their way to Salt Lake City, where a team of scientists is awaiting Ellie's arrival so they can attempt to fabricate a cure, and Joel takes on the role of surrogate father to the orphaned girl. Ultimately, when he learns that the scientists intend to kill Ellie and use her body to generate samples, Joel does the unthinkable and fights his way through the hospital, taking the unconscious Ellie out with him and telling her that there was no way for the scientists to make a cure. The sequel picks up years later with Joel chancing upon a group of young survivors led by Abby, the daughter of one of the scientists he killed. Driven by her anger over the loss for half of a decade, Abby murders Joel in front of Ellie and leaves her badly beaten. As violence frequently begets violence in The Last of Us and it constantly asks us to examine the measures that these characters take to achieve their goals, Ellie continues the cycle of violence and revenge by following Abby from Jackson, Wyoming to Seattle, where the two ruthlessly spar and leave dozens of bystanders dead or injured in their wake. This leaves neither of them satisfied or whole, and they stumble apart to try and nurse their wounds and move on until they are brought together once more for a final fight on a bloody California beach. The ending of The Last of Us Part II as released is quiet and somewhat ambiguous. If the first game asks how far are you willing to go to save a life, the sequel asks how far you should go to avenge a death and whether it's worth it. In the final chapter of the game, Ellie is struggling with PTSD but living with her partner Dina and Dina's baby JJ when she hears a rumor about Abby surfacing in California. Traveling with a kid with scars across his face. Despite Dina's protests, she sets out on her own and has a final confrontation with Abby that leaves both badly scarred but still alive. In that final moment on the beach, they are forced to reckon with the question of how much revenge is enough. Both are traumatized and have the blood of friends and foes alike on their hands, and ultimately, they seem to decide that this is the line. Ellie returns home but discovers that Dina has taken the baby and gone. Physically broken to the point of no longer being able to play the guitar, a skill that she learned from Joel, she reflects on the man a final time and takes her bag and goes, setting off through the fields and away to someplace unknown. There is a lot of discussion about the final sequence in Ellie and Dina's farmhouse, in particular about just where exactly Ellie is going. One interpretation is that she's going to return to Jackson to try and reconcile with Dina, and this move becomes much more apparent in an alternate ending to the game as revealed by co-writer Hallie Gross. In a recent episode of the Script Apart podcast, Gross states that while the scene plays out much as originally intended, there was a version of it where Ellie stops on her way out of the house to pack one of baby JJ's abandoned toys into her bag, much more heavily implying that she intends to find her way back to the family that she had made for herself. This, it seems, was ultimately too obvious of a move for the developers at Naughty Dog, who were seeking to build an ending that was more open-ended for the character, akin to her final interaction with Joel in the original game. And while we don't know if she'll make that trip back to Jackson or not, this decision is still pretty strongly supported by her last conversation with Joel. Throughout the game, the night before Joel's death weighs heavily on the story and on Ellie. For much of the game, it seems as though the pair's last moments together were another fight about Joel's decisions in the hospital and the way that this has shaped Ellie's guilt. I would do it all over again. But as Ellie sits at her guitar in the final moments of the game, we learn that she chose to try and forgive and understand Joel rather than continue to hold a grudge against him, much as she and Abby ultimately broke with their cycle of vengeance and went their separate ways, and much as she may soon ask Dina to forgive her. And that's it! It may not be a big change, but it could have certainly removed a bit of the ambiguity from the ending of The Last of Us Part II. It remains to be seen if there will ever be a Part Three, but this change could certainly give us a clearer idea of where the series might head. You think this is easy? For you and for him, I deal with it.